today's lab is the determination of the solubility product constant for a sparingly soluble salt. Um, so here we're going to start with part A, and part A is the calibration curve. So what you're going to do is you're going to have uh, four known solutions of known concentration um, to create that um, calibration curve that you're going to use uh, later on in the lab. Um, so to do that, we're going to prepare four separate solutions from a stock solution. So here in this bottle, you can see that I have this yellow solution that's potassium chromate. Uh, I'm going to dilute that uh, into four different solutions. Um, so you're going to use that uh, a formula M1V1 equals M2V2 to calculate the concentration of each of these solutions. So the first one that I'm going to show you uh, is going to be one milliliter of this stock solution and then we're going to dilute it with um, 0.25 molarity uh, sodium nitrate uh, and we're going to do that in a volumetric flask so we can accurately measure the volume um, that we need to dilute to. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to use one milliliter of this potassium chromate. So remember when you measure volumes, you should do that in a grad uh, graduated cylinder or a burette. Um, so we are actually just going to use graduated cylinders today. So I'm going to, I have one milliliter, I'm going to add that here. And then I'm going to dilute this to the line uh, with my sodium nitrate. So I'm actually going to just kind of rinse out my graduated cylinder with this first, too, just to make sure that we get all of that out. All of that potassium chromate. Then I can just fill up my solution with the rest of the uh, sodium nitrate. So you want to be careful when you get close to that line because you don't want to go over that line because that is that's going to have too much volume. Your dilution is not going to have the right concentration. Okay, so I filled it up to that line. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put this little cap on it, shake it up just to make sure that that solution um, is mixed up well. And then for the other solutions, I'm going to do the exact same process. So we have. Um, a cylinder or volumetric flask for five milliliters of our potassium chromate, 10 milliliters of, of our potassium chromate, and then 15 milliliters of the potassium chromate. And then each of those will be diluted with this 0 0.25 uh, molar sodium nitrate. Um, so it's gonna be the same process. And you'll see when I have all these solutions made that the more concentrated it is, the more of that yellow color you can see, that the darker that yellow color is going to be. Okay, so this is the one milliliter. Again, you're going to use that equation M1V1 equals M2V2 um, to make those um, calculations for what your molarity of each of these solutions are. Okay, so here you can see I finished diluting all of those solutions. So as you go up in concentration, so from one milliliter of the potassium chromate to 15 milliliters of that potassium chromate, the solution, that yellow is more, is brighter, is darker. Um, so again, use that M1V1 equals M2V2 to calculate the concentration of each of these solutions. Um, so we diluted to 100 milliliters. Uh, and that starting solution was 0.0024 molarity of the potassium chromate. Um, so you have the M1, that's the 0.0024 molarity of potassium chromate. You have the V1, so for each solution, 1, 5, 10, 15. Um, V2 for all of them is going to be 100 milliliters because we diluted these each to 100 milliliters with the sodium nitrate. And then you're gonna calculate um, M2, so the concentration of each of these solutions. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put them in uh, different bottles just so they're a little bit easier to handle so that I can get them into the spec 20, uh, into the cuvettes for the spec 20.